I'm Francesca Albertini. I'm a biomedical scientist and I work at St Peter's Hospital in Church in Surrey. When I was at school I always used to be interested in science, mainly biology based. And so I went on to do my A-levels in biology. I did chemistry as well so, and maths, so it was all a basis of science behind it. And when I had thought about medicine, veterinary science, something medical in mind, but I was very interested in the process of disease, so more pathology based. So then I read around and found out that a biomedical scientist position would actually be perfect because it was on a cellular level. I then went to university after my A levels and I studied a BSc biomedical science, at, which was a three year course. I came out with a degree, but when I applied to the IBMS to have my degree accredited, they told me that it wasn't, which then in turn I had to go back to uni for another two years to study biomedical science again, but this time it was a coterminous degree, so I carried out two work placements over the two summers, which were in eight-week blocks, and I rotated, for the first placement I rotated around all the disciplines in pathology to get a feel for each discipline, see how I liked it, see how it worked, see how everyone worked together and the role they played within the hospital. And then on the second placement I decided for the eight weeks where I work the whole placement. So I decided cellular pathology which was histology and cytology and I worked four weeks in both departments. And upon that, I decided cytology was definitely what I wanted to have a position in. It was definitely the diagnostic side. With some of the other disciplines, it was you just prepared all the samples and then they were carried off and other people, clinicians, to look at them instead. Whereas with cytology, you pre prepare it yourself and then look at it down the microscope and give your own opinion and then you can check other, you can give your opinion on other people's. And so that's why it appealed to me, definitely the fact that I knew I was having some input into the final result which could then affect the patient's care and management. I, my primary responsibility is to screen cervical samples. So to look for precancerous lesions. We can also pick up infections and it's part of the national screening program for t over 25 year olds. So that's my main workload. I also, at the moment, because I'm still learning, I'm learning non-gyne non samples, which is pleural effusions, urine, sputums. And again, we're looking for malignancies, and precancerous lesions in them as well. I also do andrology, so I do semen analysis and post vasectomy samples. And in the infertility samples, we look at sperm counts, morphologies, pH, volume, all different aspects like that. To, and they're generally referred to us after if a patient hasn't been able to conceive for over a year. And also, we do post vasectomy samples that we check that the vasectomy has actually worked. So I do those, those are my three main roles and I also prepare the samples as well so I get them, prepare them all onto a slide so then I can do the microscopy afterwards. So I do it from the start of the sample to the very end of the reporting. I think it was the pressure, certainly in clinics, because also we, I go up to clinics, um, FNA clinics, which are fine needle aspirations, and the clinician will insert a needle into a lump on the patient. So say if they've got an enlarged thyroid, the clinician will insert a needle into their thyroid, extract some cells, and then we will be in the clinic with them and we'll put the sample onto a slide, stain it up there and look at it, and let the clinician know if they've got the right good cellularity for a diagnosis, whether they'll need to go back in and take more cells, etc. And that's quite a high pressured situation because in some of the clinics, especially bronchoscopy, the patient has a tube down into their lung, 
which, and the patient is also sedated, so the clinician needs to work at a certain speed because we can't keep the patient under for too long. So it's mainly the pressured environment, I find. The highlights for me is you know that there's a patient that's going to you're helping a patient at the end of the day. It's rewarding in that way. You know that from what you, you, you are saying or you're reporting, you're giving your opinion on, that that could directly affect the way the patient will be cared for and treated. So for me, that's, that's rewarding. That's my highlight. And the low light probably be some of the work is routine, so it can be a bit monotonous. But again, at the time, you know the patient, at the end result's going to hopefully have a good outcome. And one of the other lowlights is, again, in some of the clinics, the patients can be quite unwell. So it's quite upsetting to see such sick people. But again, you know that your work is for their good and hopefully you'll have a good outcome and help towards their management and treatment. Um, one in particular that I've been doing is still a trial, but it's called OSNA, which is one-step nucleic acid amplification, which is a molecular technique, and it tests sentinel nodes from breast cancer patients, and it's intraoperative. So while the patient's having a lumpectomy or mastectomy, the surgeon will remove a sentinel node, which is a lymph node in the patient's armpit, and send it to us and we process it on a machine to see whether the tumour has spread to the lymph nodes, in which case we then will ring surgery back up and tell them that it's spread and so they'll clear all the lymph nodes in the patient and if not then they know it hasn't so they don't have to do the auxiliary clearance and, it, and in that way as well it saves the patient from having to come back for a second surgery because normally the sample would be sent off and it would take a couple of days to process, whereas this is an intraoperative, so within half an hour to 45 minutes they'll know whether they have to remove the auxiliary lymph nodes or not. So that's one of the new things that I've come across.